All right, so check this out. You've probably seen photos like this getting passed around the internet at least once or twice. And if you haven't, well, now you have. You get a little bit of a bright foliage effect, a little bit of a dreamy look to them. Images like this are actually the result of colored infrared photographs, either taken by a modded camera used specifically for taking images like this, or the use of an infrared filter in front of the camera lens. I want to share with you how a similar effect can be achieved in Photoshop pretty easily. For this effect, you're going to want to choose an image with plenty of green. What we need to know about infrared photography when we think of this effect is the fact that when using an infrared filter, you'll block some of the visible parts of the spectrum that you'll normally see through a camera. Greens will reflect light strongly, while blues will be the least reflective to light on the camera's sensor when passed through an infrared filter. Knowing this, we can use a couple quick tools inside Photoshop to help mock this effect. Okay, I'm going to start with the image of this house, being that it's mostly consumed by green, has a little bit of orange that we can work with this, for this effect. We're going to start by coming down here to our adjustment layers, which you can either go up here to your layer, new adjustment layer, and select from there, or you can come down here to this little half black, half white circle and choose your adjustment layer from there. I personally like going to this because I'm lazy and it's a lot less work than going up here to this, this, this. Now we just got this and this. We're going to choose black and white from here. Now what this black and white adjustment layer does is it actually analyzes the background image here for the colors so we can find reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, and magentas in here. We're going to focus on the greens and the yellows to brighten them up a bit to um, help replicate the reflectiveness of greens in an infrared image. Being that they're strongly, strongly reflective, I can't speak at all, but being that they are strongly reflective, take some reds down up here on the house because in those oranges there's some red sitting around and if we take the blues down uh, you see that it affected the window a little bit here and a little bit of the roof but we can take the reds down even a little bit more darken that up I think that looks pretty good you don't want to overdo it because you don't want some crazy overexposed image now you'll see some darker areas in here also this is where the layer mask actually comes in handy, which I'll show you in a bit. But this looks good to me, so I'm going to leave it at that. Now what we can do is come down here to our layers and click this little eyeball, poke it out, and make that layer invisible, just to show the background layer. We're going to select the background layer down here, make sure that's selected, come up here to select, and color range. When we use the select color range, we actually are given this little dropper that we can select colors from around the image. Whatever color you select from around the image will show up here as white parts of the image with the parts not selected being the black parts or the darker parts. We'll come over here and we'll select some green areas until we start liking what we're seeing. I kind of like that. You can see a lot of that green is selected. You can further your selection less or more with this fuzziness slider. I might actually bring it up to about 135. See, so you still got the darks over here and the oranges and on the parts of the roof that we don't want to be selected. We'll click OK. Now we can come back up to our black and white layer, make it visible again. And with this selection, with, that, with all this green selected, we can come down here to create another new adjustment layer for hue and saturation. Now that we created that, it pulls up over here, you'll see in our layers panel, a mask of that selection. This selection being masked means that it will only affect that selection. We can come up here and do our hue and saturation panel and click the colorize option so that we can colorize this selection. I'm going to select a bit of a blue just because I like that. I think that looks good. For purposes of this tutorial, we'll just leave it at that. 
Now what we want to do is we want to select the other parts, the house, the window, the chimney, parts of the roof, all that. So we're going to come down here and on a Mac you're going to command click, on a Windows it would be control click. But we're going to, since I'm on a Mac, I'm going to command click this section or this part right here. Make sure you click this and not this. This will load our selection back up for everything that we colored here. To select the inverse, you can come up here and just simply go to Select Inverse, and that'll select the entire opposite. Now we're going to follow that same formula again. New Adjustment Layer, Hue Saturation, Colorize, and select a color that we like. I like the reddish brown look to it. And I think that looks pretty good. Like I was saying earlier, the upside to working with layer masks here is actually so we can come in with this brush, select white. When you paint with black on a layer mask, it'll take out whatever effect you're working on. So if I were to paint black over these leaves, you see them start turning brown. Don't want to do that. We can further adjust our mask here by selecting white and going into spots that we think should be more blue and painting on them so that we reveal some more of that blue. Oops. And I want that to go above, not below. So what I did was, I was a little bit screwed up here. I actually had this layer below this layer, so it was showing some of that orange-brown over that. I just fixed that by switching the layer positions. But if we keep painting with white on here, we can start revealing some of the spots so they're not so ugly. And to do the best that we can, come in here, small little details, and it's not super necessary. If you like the effect the way it is, then you like the effect the way it is. It's really all up to personal preference and taste, but I personally like this a bit more. Now we'll come over here to the image of Cuervo, and we'll follow the exact same formula that we did for that one. New adjustment layer, black and white, except with this one, we're going to focus a little bit more on the blues after we get the yellows and greens. So we'll brighten the yellows and greens just like we did on the last one. We don't want to overdo them. And since I'm working with a JPEG, you might see some of this crazy artifact over here. Just ignore that for right now. You'll mostly want to work with a raw image, but as you can see with this, it will work with JPEGs given the image. We'll come down here to blues with this one and actually darken the blues so we get that dark sky effect like you see in a lot of infrared images. And minus this little ugly section here, the rest of it looks pretty good. So I like that. I'll keep it like that. Again, we'll come down here, we'll poke its eye out, and select the background layer. New adjustment layer again. Oh wait, sorry. I'm all switched around here. Select color range find a green that we like. I honestly like what's already selected there, so I'm just going to hit OK. I'll turn the black and white layer back on, select it. The reason that you want to select this black and white layer is so that it actually makes the adjustment layer above it, because if you have the background layer selected, it will make the adjustment layer below. You don't want that. So we'll come up here, drag it. If you accidentally do that super easy fix, just drag it right back up. Colorize, and we'll find that blue again that I like to do. Again, we'll command click to select that, select inverse, and create a new adjustment layer of hue and saturation again. Colorize, and find that orange. Or let's find a pink. I don't know, pink would be cool. Desaturate it a little bit. Yeah, that looks cool. So now this is where the help with the layer masks again comes in. 
we can come down here to where our blue is, or whatever color you chose for the foliage, drag it above, come in with a brush, and obviously this is way easier if you have a Wacom tablet, but you can still do it with a mouse. I mean, more time consuming obviously, but totally doable with either one. We can paint in the small little details of the leaves. Very, very time consuming. Can totally be worth it in the end. Sometimes not extremely necessary. Like I think this looks pretty cool the way it is. Um, I mean, I personally would probably fix a couple of these and actually go in here and really get the edges fixed up. So like with a small little brush here and actually really fix these edges up, probably even a smaller brush. Really fix these edges up. I don't know what's going on outside. It sounds like they're trying to break the door down and get in here. You can hit X to keep switching between your black brush and your white brush to continue painting on this. But there you pretty much have the effect. So there you have it. Pretty cool, pretty easy effect. Something that you can go through your photos that you've already taken and further edit them, do some cool things to them, have fun with it. Thanks for watching my shitty tutorial. I hope to have more shitty tutorials up for you in the coming weeks. I hope to upload one to two videos per week of Photoshop tutorials, Lightroom tutorials, and just general photography techniques. So join me next week, and I hope to have some more shitty but very cool stuff to share with you.